Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to my LinkedIn and Facebook Live. Each and every week I have the pleasure of having a conversation with authors, speakers and thought leaders. It gives me great pleasure today to have this conversation with Sarah Tabe, who is the Global HR Director and DNI Head for Schneider Electrics. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Gautam. How are you today? Fantastic, fantastic. It's an absolute pleasure in this virtual world. I'm in Mumbai, you're in Dubai, and we get a chance to have a meaningful conversation and share some insights uh, today. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. And uh, tell me, I hope everyone is uh, okay and uh, doing okay in India. Huh? All as best as can be. I mean, it's a challenging times to say the least. So uh, the best we can do is uh, to stay and respect the lockdown and uh, and hope that the, the systems uh, catch up with itself. But uh, all being well, we should be stable in the coming months. But thank, thank you for you. your thanks for your concern. So first and foremost, congratulations on on the launch of your book. Uh, Inclusion starts with you. I mean, that's an intriguing title. Um, so congratulations to you on the launch of your book globally. Thank you. Yes, it's been uh, it's been a journey, I would say, since December. I mean, we've launched on the 22nd of November, but since then it has really been a, a journey, a lot of learnings. A, a, you know, it's a it's a completely different universe that I have never explored. So it has been uh, really uh, interesting, and uh, and I've been enjoying every moment. Fantastic, fantastic. I I got to ask the question, you know, why did you write this book? You know, that there's always an inspiration or a story behind the story. So I'd love to hear your story. What inspired you to write this book, Sarah? Uh, absolutely. So uh, good time. Yeah, as you said, yes, there's always a story behind. Uh, for me, for me, it was really about transferring a message to the world. Uh, around inclusion, a topic that we've been talking about for a long time now, uh, especially in corporate and me being in the HR space and uh, tapping more into the DNI world, uh, I've learned a lot of things that um, have been a misconception. And I realized that when uh, when I started talking to others around diversity and inclusion, I realized how many misconceptions there are around the topic. And the reason why I decided to write the book is to uh, correct those misconceptions tell the world about diversity and inclusion, and most importantly, to tell them how it relates to each and every one of us, me, you, and everyone included, and how we can all have a role in playing, you know, to change the world and become a really better, inclusive, equal, uh, and balanced uh, space for everyone. Fantastic, fantastic. You mentioned uh, in your response that you know, obviously with your corporate background, but is diversity inclusion only a topic for corporates or is it beyond corporates? Well, maybe that's how it started many years back. Uh, and, and definitely we see the topic more in corporate than, uh, than uh, uh, you know, socially and um, individually. But one of the misconceptions I wanted to clarify is that definitely DNI is beyond what we see in the corporate world. It's beyond being only an inclusive manager, but more about becoming an inclusive person, a leader. A leader in society, leader in the family, leader in community, uh, an individual that looks at things differently um, uh, and definitely has a role to play. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely one of the strong messages um, I use in my book and I try to explain and clarify. Uh, and it's really about the message I want to transfer here. Fantastic, fantastic. The other myth I've heard, you know, people say when they think of DNI or diversity inclusion, they think it means women in leadership. I mean, we know we both know a great dear friend of ours, uh, Sally Helgeson, who wrote the book How Women Rise. In fact, um, you're doing a fireside chat with her in a couple of weeks, uh, which I'm looking forward to on a virtual masterclass. But you know, DNI definitely goes way beyond that. Could you shed some light on this uh, myth that people have that DNI is all about women in leadership? Uh, great, yes, yes, and I'm looking again as you mentioned. Like the event with Sally, with Sally on May 19th is is really a, a milestone because again for me Sally is one of the role models in this space. Uh, she has definitely worked a lot on the women's space, but uh, uh, now more and more tapping into inclusion, and this is something that she's talked about many many years ago. For me. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, a lot of people still think that DNI is only about having more women on the board or, uh, you know, improving women representation in the workplace. Um, uh, and unfortunately, 
sometimes the message goes you know uh, unseen or uh, or you lose a lot of people when you focus only on having those kpis or targets uh, defined uh, when you talk about diversity it's important to understand that diversity is beyond women it's really about having people with different backgrounds cultures ethnicities um, uh, disability uh, uh, diversity on all aspects and the reason why we talk about diversity is when you have that conglomerate of people sitting in one room the more important is to make or give them the ability to speak together to have that one common language where people can interact and um, uh, and create and uh, potentially uh, produce different results when it comes to uh, organizational effectiveness. So uh, it's definitely not women only. Women is one of the aspects and reason being is that 50% of the population are women and they need to be represented in every sector, in every uh, industry. Uh, but also it's really beyond um, mostly having diversity in mindset, perspective, uh, to be able to impact creativity and results, um, be it in organizations or societies or even governments. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I think India, I've, I've experienced that being here the last couple of years that, you know, the DNI goes way beyond women leaders. And it's great to see many organizations here in India really prioritizing DNI, um, not only just as a subject area, but actually implementing this in the workplace where they sort of have a, a mandate to ensure that balance um, in all aspects beyond just uh, the women and ma male uh, balance. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, yep. Are there any examples that you have that you could share or either a story or a case study around, around this topic that you could share? Absolutely. I mean, in, in the book, I tap into a lot of different aspects from a corporate perspective and social and individual perspective. But one of them that I could give an example of, and again, it goes back to me being uh, also an advocate in a company that believes in diversity and inclusion. Uh, I mean, Schneider Electric is really one of the giants, I would say, and the real contributors to changing uh, uh, things and one of the things that we've done is uh, simply change um, our policies and practices to become more inclusive. It's the wording that we use. For example, uh, when you talk about um, about maternity leave uh, yes. or you know the leave that that you could give to parental, I would call it uh, now man or woman or partners. It's up to them to decide who's going to be the first, the primary and the secondary carer. But most importantly, to account for uh, adoption. Why not? I mean, many people adopt uh, adopt children, and this is a right for, for the primary and secondary carer to to spend some time and give um, attention to the new um, to the new addition to the family. So there are a few small things that sometimes we overlook or we have never thought of that could make a big difference in people's life. Uh, in Schneider, we've introduced that a few years back. Um, uh, changing the small wordings that made a big impact on people's life, and I've and I've seen, uh, I first had a first hand experience um, the impact on a few of the individuals in the U.S. and uh, Europe that have actually benefited from this leave, and it, it has mostly changed their lives. Fantastic! No, th thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, are there any tips that you could help share that, you know, how leaders can become more inclusive? Any tips or ideas that they can apply that you can share? Uh, yes, the term diversity uh, is much easier than inclusion. Let's be realistic. And, you know, this is something that I always talk about. Sometimes as leaders, we put a lot of pressure on, our, uh, pressure on ourselves and we say, you know, I'm doing a lot of things in, in my space, but I don't see the impact, uh, uh, you know, as, as much as we would aspire to see. And the reason being is that when you talk about inclusion, it's really a change of mindset. Change management and change management. When you talk about mindset, behavior, uh, perspective, these are things that won't change overnight. And let's be realistic. You do. You it starts by creating awareness, but then uh, this awareness is, is is the first step of creating or uh, seeing change. Uh, so when you talk about inclusive leaders, a few things that people can do is first start to assess themselves. Uh, am I inclusive? It means that I am, am I open to other people's perspective? Am I um, judgmental when it comes to some stereotypes? Do I have biases uh, that I can overcome and, um, and, uh, and challenge? So it's really not rocket science. It's understanding how our mind works 
And I talk a lot in the book about our human nature uh, in, uh, in loving similarities, in uh, biases and stereotypes uh, that, that we've created over time. Um, and it's really about asking ourselves, are my facts, you know, are my assumptions based on facts or uh, judgment? Uh, am I listening enough? Am I open to others? So it's really a few things that we can start by doing uh, to create more awareness of our own behavior uh, and our impact on others. Fantastic. We have some interesting comments coming in live. I'd like to acknowledge them. We have Sagar Amlani saying, inclusion should be practiced in all walks of life. That is the key to ultimate happiness. That's great. Thank you, Sagar. And we have another one here. When it comes to creativity and innovation, I would rate women colleagues higher than others. My take is that this decade of innovation and digital transformation belongs to women. And we must encourage and see more women leaders at strategic positions. Fantastic, fantastic. Great comment. And, and again, uh, Gautam, it's really about balance. It's, it's important because, you know, also calling for diversity and inclusion doesn't mean that we, we leave men behind. It's not about that at all. It's really about having balance between, right. you know, industries and sector. And, and um, uh, you've talked about digital transformation. In the digital world and the technology world, yet uh, women representation is very low. And it has a lot of factors behind it. it it has it. Uh, it could be because of pipeline, because of availability of talented women in this field, and because of mindset where you need to push more women to think that you know they can do anything. It's just about um, battling that advertisement or mindset that we have we've created throughout the years. Great, great. One headline that I've been seeing numerous times in the last month or so is that um, the countries globally that are headed by women. They seem to be in responding to the pandemic and handling this much better. Any light you can share on uh, on why that's happening? Well, I see a lot has been done by New Zealand, and New Zealand is is, is really in the uh, in the news uh, because of the many actions that they have taken. Now, my opinion is that it doesn't necessarily have to be because they are led by women, but it's also it's important to acknowledge that when women are equally balanced or equally represented in a government, their perspective is added to the table. So uh, um, women have different experiences because they are, most of the time, they are more involved in families, what families need, what kids, kids need, what their husbands need or, or partners. Um, and this is uh, overlooked in many, many times or have been overlooked uh, previously because of, you know, history in many of the policies that governments had, in many of municipal decisions. So having women's perspective on board uh, uh, creates that, um, uh, that uh, different opinion and different way of looking at things that is incorporated uh, in decision making and in taking uh, uh, steps forward uh, to, to, uh, to fix, be it COVID or other uh, pandemics or challenges that the governments are facing. So what I heard in one of the points you mentioned, you see that the correlation in the past, there were women were generally homemakers and keeping the family together, being more, let's say, empathetic listeners, being better communicators to some extent, but that kind of environment that they have at home, they're bringing that balance to the workplace. Um, so it's not just made on the bringing a better balance, be it in the boardroom, be it at decision making positions. You see that is one of the traits that's coming as, as a value add to the workplace. Absolutely. And one of the things, Gautam, that uh, also we started seeing more and more in the workplace is the focus on the skills that women, especially when they deliver or have, you know, raise their kids or stay home moms, learn during that period they become the best negotiators they become you know because you do these with your with your youngsters you you do you negotiate all the time you discipline you're committed you're dedicated there's a lot of skills that stay home moms um, uh, uh, become better at and that can also help a lot the corporate environment in moving forward and we've seen lately how linkedin also has added uh, one of the jobs, uh, especially, you know, as, as recruiters, sometimes when we see a gap in a woman's uh, CV, we wonder like, what happened, why this has happened. And now LinkedIn has tried to fix this and, and created that job title as stay home mom, because that is a full time job. And that teaches you a lot of skills that can cannot be acquired somewhere else. Fantastic. Fantastic. 
One more topic that's been coming up, especially when we're working in the virtual world and this work from home, and India still remains in lockdown, and many countries in the world also have either a lockdown or a hybrid model. Now, the mm -hmm. pressure on the roles of women they play, they play the role of a wife, uh, a mom, um, you know, a sister, a daughter, and then they also have the commitment of their professional life. Now, doing all of these hats all from home is creating a lot more pressure on women than ever before. Um, any advice, suggestions on how organizations can respond to this kind of pressure in terms of flexibility, understanding, support? Yes, the, I mean, it's unfortunate, uh, Gautam, that we've seen uh, uh, this the she session happening uh, in, in 2020, where we lost like more than 2.5 uh, million women uh, from the works, workplace. Um, uh, and again, and I wrote about this, uh, not in my book, but in one of the articles where we see that she session has been hitting us hard. Um, even when, when companies, many companies have moved into flexible working and all of that. Here, I, I talk a lot about the men allies. Uh, we've seen a lot of men saying, I am an ally of diversity and inclusion. I support my wife to, or partner to work. And, you know, I encourage my daughter to get the right education and be an engineer. Or, or So there are a lot of allies that uh, that support the diversity and inclusion agenda. But what needs or what I would recommend or I, what I would like to see more of is men or partner allies that take over part of that unpaid work that women do and as you said you know women have uh, the challenge of taking care of the house cooking cleaning uh, uh, teaching the children you know now with homeschooling yes. uh, giving yeah. all of that plus doing 100 percent of their jobs even with flexibility and staying home and you know with managing their own time it is difficult so I would like to see more of men taking part of that role to be able to have a balanced 50-50 chance of uh, success for both in, in the corporate environment. Flexibly, you know, even working from home remotely or non-remotely, this needs to start to happen more uh, partnership, re-partnership. And that's what will help uh, move the needle more on the DNI uh, space. Fantastic. So what I heard is a key takeaway. Obviously, the companies can provide support, flexibility in that sense. But what we'd like is to see more men stepping up and sharing those responsibilities um, on the home front to bring a better balance, even in that sense, uh, at home as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's really more about uh, being genuine and doing things, taking action. You don't have to advertise, you know, I'm an ally, I support. Support is a word, but it's real actions that could help uh, women take more uh, and equal roles uh, in the, at home and in the workplace. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, looking forward to uh, the May 18th, we're hosting our dear global thought leader and speaker, author of How Women Rise, Sally Helgeson. You've read her book, you're familiar with her work. I believe you also interviewed her recently. Um, you know, for audiences and corporates, both in the Gulf and India, any part of the world where DNI and i um, and women inclusiveness is an omnipresent part, what could they look forward to from this event from your perspective? Uh, I believe that uh, Sally, as, as you said, yes, her work has been very well known in the corporate environment, especially. Uh, also with women also who want to evolve because um, her work revolves around becoming more uh, aware of what are the hinders uh, or the roadblocks that are hindering progression. And one of them, as we said, is the support you're getting from your community and your partner at home and all of that. But also there's a lot of things that we as women need to work on. And in this um, uh, event, uh, Rising Together, uh, on May 18th with Sally, I really hope that we're going to have uh, an audience from all around the world because uh, Sally will move from theory into practice and giving those practical examples, not only for women, but also for men on how to be inclusive. And this is what's missing. And that's what I try to do in my book in a part, uh, to move from just talking about the NI as a, as a global topic and moving more into action. Sally will hit on that uh, in this workshop. So, um, and I'm really looking forward to uh, learn a lot from Sally, again, a role model in the space in inclusion, diversity, women empowerment, um, and also men support uh, with her work. Again, How Women Rise was co-written by Marshall Goldsmith. So it is, it does have a balanced perspective between men and women. 
Um, uh, and there's a lot of things uh, uh, we expect to learn from this workshop. So I really invite everyone to take time and register today uh, to this uh, event. Thank you so much, Sarah. Around your book and the topic of DNI, uh, before I wrap up with a couple of questions, anything else you'd like to share to the audience who's uh, with us today? Uh, absolutely. I mean, many people ask me where to find the book. Uh, uh, again, the book was published in November and we are doing our best to have it accessible and available to everyone. So if yes. that is available on Amazon, uh, Book Depository, Barnes & Noble, and uh, recently we've had it uh, available uh, in the bookstores in uh, Dubai for those who need it in um, Borders, uh, and on Amazon India. Uh, because I know a lot of people from India are super interested and I have a lot of support that I always thank uh, uh, India audience for. Uh, and now we're going to have it available in also uh, crosswords, hopefully uh, in the coming uh, short term future to, um, uh, to have it accessible for people. And I really hope people will read it and benefit from it. And I'm happy to any time connect and give uh, any advice or support for those who need it on the inclusion front. Fantastic, fantastic. For anyone looking to get a copy of Inclusion Starts With You, you know, it's available in the retail bookstores in the UAE, otherwise Amazon India um, and Amazon US. So I highly recommend for those interested in this topic to get a copy. And uh, I'm sure you'll be inspired to learn a lot more from Sarah. Thank you. So Sarah, we had the pleasure of meeting just about six months back and uh, we had a chance to actually exchange books where, you know, I gave, a, gave you a copy of my book um, breaking Bread. I'd love to ask you, uh, this is the book here, and I'd just like to uh, ask you, what does Breaking Bread mean to you? <laughs> Absolutely great. Uh, it was definitely a great opportunity for us to meet within, you know, in the midst of all of what was happening, the COVID and all, but it, it, it has, it's a pleasure, Gautam, to always see you and talk to you and discuss. Again, your book is one of the great uh, books I've also read and enjoyed reading page by page. And for me, uh, breaking bread is really about accepting others. I mean, I see it also in the eye of, of being inclusive because, you know, it's not only about building the connections and the relations. It's, it's really beyond that. It's accepting others for who they are. And that is part of being an inclusive individual, non-judgmental, uh, accepting, uh, open, transparent and really authentic. And that is, uh, that is uh, the way I see it. Fantastic, fantastic. Perhaps would you have in your memory any breaking bread story where you had breakfast, lunch or dinner with someone, be it personally or professionally, where you look back and you're like, that lunch was the start of a great friendship or that, that breakfast was the start of a, of a great collaboration or perhaps a career change, anything you could share? Absolutely. I do believe uh, many of my life experiences have started this way. Um, one of them is is with you, Gotham. I mean, we've met few a uh, few months back, and uh, and we've had a lot of encounters. And I'm sure you know you've helped me in a lot of things, especially in the book journey that I can uh, uh, not thank you enough for. And and for me, that is the beginning of a great uh, friendship and support uh, system that I never thought uh, I never thought of. So um, uh, for me, uh, you know, you meet people for reasons, for seasons, or for lifetimes, and that is the way I see it. So uh, never say no to opportunities to meet someone new. Uh, you never know what's going to come out of it. And, uh, and I've witnessed that in a lot of times throughout my life. Fantastic. No, thank you very much, sir. It's been an absolute pleasure. I mean, one thing I love about the culture, be it in Lebanon, the Gulf, India, is, is family and food. And to me, that itself is inclusive in the sense that, you know, we, you know, that families that eat together stay together. And when, when we meet one another over breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we are able to build rapport, uh, build relationships, build trust. And then the business is in just an organic flow that happens. The relationships are built. And we just create a high value, high trust relationship. So um, I'm thankful to you as well. I fully agree. Thank you, Gotham, for all your uh, support. And uh, thank you also for this amazing uh, opportunity to be with you on, uh, uh, on Breaking Bread with Gotham. It's a pleasure. I uh, hope that the audience also enjoyed this encounter and uh, looking forward to many, many more opportunities for us to work together. Absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure, Sarah. Congratulations on your book once again. Inclusion starts with you. I really wish you all the best of success for that book to become a global bestseller. 
And obviously, we'll see you on May 18th with Sally Helgeson, where you'll have a fireside chat with her um, to conclude that virtual masterclass. So we'll stay closely connected. Thank you once again, Sarah. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure. You. Thank you, and see you soon.